Hi everyone, I'm Daisy Victoria and welcome to a video tutorial about how to make a petticoat. Specifically, we are going to be making a cartridge pleated petticoat. It looks really nice. I really love the way the cartridge pleating looks and you can use this for so many different costumes and clothing and formal gowns. It's something that we see in skirts from the 16th century. We see it up through the 19th century. You can use it on Civil War dresses. You can use it on 17th, 18th century. You can use it on modern stuff. It's really versatile. This type of petticoat I use with historical and fantasy gowns. And I've been thinking for a while, I'm gonna show you guys how I make these. And guess what, friend? It is finally time. I am currently making this petticoat for a medieval or Renaissance inspired gown. It's a fantasy sort of pre-Raphaelite gown. And this petticoat is actually based on historical petticoats. So this is a really versatile petticoat. It's also not that difficult to make and you don't even really need a pattern. So today I am making this petticoat out of white taffeta. This is poly taffeta and it's got that really nice body to it. I like the taffeta for a petticoat because it helps the skirt to stand out a little bit more versus a fabric that doesn't have as much body. Now a note is that if you are making a historic costume, please note that polyester is not historically accurate. So do keep that in mind. So to start out, I've actually cut three very long rectangles. So this is actually the full width of the fabric. So my fabric is 58 inches, which means that all three of my pieces are 58 inches. The length of each rectangle is the length I want my skirt to be, plus a little bit more for the hem. So what we're doing is we're folding over at the top and at the hem. And as we do this method, you can actually fold over extra. So if you are at all concerned about cutting your fabric too short, you can always give it an extra inch or two and you'll be able to fold it over. It won't be a problem. So the pleating method we're gonna be doing today is called cartridge pleating, thus named because it kind of looks like cartridges when you do it. It's also been called gauging at other times and it's really, really nice. It does require handwork and it's worth it. I'm using my fabric cut into those three pieces. Now you could cut more pieces or less pieces depending what you're going for. I've also cut a four inch wide piece of fabric that I'm gonna use as the base of my waistband. And I have a really cool extra little thing here. I have this checkered ribbon. And this checkered ribbon is actually what I'm gonna use to properly gauge the sizing for my cartridge bleeding. So when we get to that part, you'll see why this makes it super easy. Now on this particular skirt, I am going to leave slits in two of the seams so that I can get into pockets. As you notice, I have three pieces, which is not an even number. I am going to put the pocket slits in the sort of front area. So I'm gonna have one piece across the front and then I'm gonna have a seam where two pieces come together in the back. So those pocket slits are gonna be sort of side front. And then I'm actually gonna wear a pair of pockets underneath the dress where I can keep my things. And if you guys want the pattern for my pockets, I will link that. I also have a video talking about how I wear my pockets. All right, so first things first on sewing, we're actually gonna sew all these pieces together along that, well, it's the short side because I use the full width, but it's the length, right? Like from waist to floor. We're gonna sew those together and I'm gonna leave a little bit open at the top in the back so that way I can actually, you know, fasten the skirt, take it on and off over my hips. I'm also going to leave slits in those side front seams and I'm gonna hem those slits just like I'm gonna hem the back so I can get my hands in there. I'm gonna go ahead and sew those together. All right, so I've now sewn those seams. So they're actually gonna be the back seam and the side front seams. They're all the way from waist to hem with the exception of where I need openings. So this is the back seam and I've left it open at the top, just you know, plenty enough that I'll be able to get this on over my hips. So 
you can leave quite a bit. And since this is a petticoat, at least for my purposes here, it doesn't really matter like if there's a gap because no one's gonna see it. If you don't want a gap, you can always put a placket or something behind it, or you can overlap the waistband there. The center front seams have openings here that do not go all the way to the top. And that's because I don't need them open all the way up to the top. I just need to be able to slip my hand in there. So I'm gonna be wearing pockets that tie around my waist. They're separate pieces, sort of like ye old fanny pack, if you will. And then this skirt goes over top of them. And when I wear the skirt, I just stick my hand right in there and get to my pockets. So we're leaving these open plenty big enough. You can stick your hand in there. And if you want to make them extra big, it's not a problem. Just, you know, you don't want to make them too small. You want to make them big enough. Your hand can get in there. So what I'm going to do next is I'm actually going to hem these openings. So I'm just going to fold them in and stitch them down. If you're making a historical garment that you want to be as accurate as possible, you can hand stitch those down. I am not worried about that right now. I'm going to machine stitch these. All right, so I sewed those. So we have some nice hems here at the pocket slits as well as the back edge. Here's the other pocket slit. And where's the back edge? It's here somewhere. I don't know where, but I'll find it. And then here's the back edge. Now you may notice I didn't finish the fabric on the inside. That's because this is the selvage of my fabric, which is that raw finished edge that comes on the end of your fabric on either end. So basically that's not going to unravel. So you don't have to finish it off unless you like a different look for it or something. If it's not the selvage you're using and or you want to finish it off, you can serge the edges of your fabric or you can use a zigzag stitch on your regular home sewing machine. The zigzag stitch will also finish it off. You can also do something fancy like French seams if you want to. The easiest is obviously to use the selvage. You don't have to finish it off. So that's basically putting the body of the skirt together. The next step is to actually hem the bottom and the top of this skirt. And then we're gonna gather it into the waistband, we're gonna make the waistband too. So for the bottom hem, now you can wait till the end to do the bottom hem if you wanna check the length. Actually, that's usually a pretty good idea. Even if you save the bottom hem for later though, you still have to hem the top of the skirt. Now when we hem the top of the skirt, we're actually gonna use this super cool checkered ribbon because we're going to insert that into the top of the skirt to give us a guide for the gauging or cartridge pleating. Right, so basically what we're doing is first I want to find the back of the skirt. So the way this hem is going to work is that we're going to fold over and then you don't want that raw edge there because you don't want it to fray. So if you weren't using ribbon, you would have to fold it over again. But since we are using a ribbon, see how we can actually fold it over and then use that ribbon and we only need one fold of the actual fabric. Okay, just kidding about folding over only once for my project and I will show you why. So if I fold over once and then I stick this ribbon on here, my fabric is thin enough that I can see the checkered pattern through to the other side, which is the right side. And even though there's gonna be a lot of pleats there, I'd rather try to avoid that if I can. So that's a little tip to think about on your fabric as well, is if you have something kind of sheer or light colored and you are using this to help you gauge the size of your pleats, make sure you can't see through to the other side. So folding over twice, I'm actually making sure that it's folded over enough that this ribbon will go entirely behind it. So that way from the right side of the fabric, I can't really see it. Okay, so now I'm going to fold under the edge of the ribbon and I am going to stitch that down all the way around the skirt. Now you can stitch it down on the top and the bottom. You don't necessarily need to. So we're gonna be doing two rows of hand stitches throughout this whole thing. And it's gonna be rather well secured. 
So if you wanna just stitch it down on the top, you can do that. If you aren't using this ribbon, you can just stitch it down at the bottom there or even not stitch it down because you will be sewing all those stitches, it will be stitched down. But since I'm adding the ribbon, obviously I don't wanna have that just hanging out. I do want that stitched down to the skirt. So I'll go ahead and do that. I've now got my checked ribbon sewn down to here and I just sewed it on the top. You can sew it on the bottom if you want some extra stability, that's totally fine, you don't have to. Now before we pleat this, we're actually going to create the waistband because then we're going to pleat this so that it fits onto that waistband. So what you wanna do is cut a piece of that four inch strip as long as you need to go around your waist and a little bit extra so you can overlap it at the back. I've cut two layers of this. You can use interfacing or something else too, but just having a little bit extra makes it extra stable because this taffeta is very light and I wanted it to be a little more stable than just that single piece for the waistband. So what we're gonna do is basically fold this over and sew it right there into a tube. And then after we sew it into a tube, we'll fold under these edges and secure those. So the waistband is made as a totally separate piece from the skirt, and then we're gonna pleat it onto the waistband. So we're gonna sew this together here and then turn it right side out. All right, so I went ahead and sewed the waistband together, it turned it right side out, and then I just folded the edges in on both sides and I'm gonna sew across there to finish that edge off. And now we are ready for the cartridge pleating portion of this project. So our waistband, we're gonna set off to the side for now, though we do need to mark how much of it we want the skirt attached to. So if you figured that much overlap, you wanna mark that on the waistband because you wanna make sure you're pleating your skirt onto the, just the part that goes around your waist and not the part that's gonna overlap on the waistband. So just your waist size. So with our waistband, we're gonna mark where we want this attached. You can do this after you put in the gauging stitches, but you might as well just go ahead and do it. So I like to put it basically to the edge of one side and then have the other side of the waistband overlap that one. So then I'm only going to attach my pleating to there. So that way this much of the waistband will not have skirt attached and it'll just overlap the other side like that. There are three seams in my skirt. So I'm gonna divide this part that's gonna have the skirt attached into three equal sections. And that's gonna help me to just make sure that it's gathered evenly onto the waistband. Okay, so let's go ahead and start cartridge pleating. To do this, you're gonna need two needles. Preferably those needles are about the same size. It doesn't really matter if they're not, but it's just a little easier if they are. And you're gonna need really long pieces of thread. In fact, you can even leave the thread attached to the spool of thread if you like. Since I'm using the basic regular thread, I have doubled it to make sure it's strong enough. If you're using a very strong thread, then you may not have to double it. I always feel safest if I double it anyway though, because you really don't want these to come out, especially while you're working on it. So the good thing about this ribbon is that we are gonna use it to gauge how far apart these stitches are. So your cartridge pleats are gonna go like this, sort of like an accordion. So I want this first one, you know, I want it to go in so my skirt is folded like that and not like that, right? So that means that I wanna go in with my needle from the outside first. And I'm just gonna do that right there. And then the other needle I'm gonna put into the corresponding part but further down on the ribbon. So I'm actually gonna put it really close to the bottom there. So now what I'm gonna do is just start making some really long running stitches. 
So however far apart you want them, count that on your ribbon. So I think I like it here. So that means, yeah, that's pretty good. I could go further. That's probably enough. I could probably go as far as here. Nah, I like it here. So I'm gonna go, so basically this is one, two, three in three little spots on the ribbon. And then, so I'm gonna come back up at the next three spots over on the ribbon. So I'm just going one, two, three, and then one, two, three more over, pulling that thread through. And then I'm gonna keep doing that. So I'm gonna go over one, two, three, and up one, two, three, and pull it through. Now remember how many like spots on your ribbon depends on what ribbon you're using and how big you want your pleats to be. So each one is a little more than half an inch here. Looks like just under one and a half centimeters. So that's an okay width of stitch. You can do it longer, you can even do it shorter. So we are going to do the same thing on that bottom one. So everywhere I went in and out of the fabric at the higher up stitch line. I'm gonna do that again at the lower stitch line. And then I'm going to keep going all the way along this waistband. Okay, so once you have a few of them stitched, you can start pulling these if you want to. Now, you don't need to do that so soon, you can do more first, but basically we're gonna pull the threads and it's gonna accordion up like that. And that is how we are going to gather this entire skirt. In my experience, you do want to start pulling these before you finish stitching the whole waistband. It's just a little easier to manage versus trying to stitch the entire waistband with enormous amounts of thread and then gather all of it at the end. I just like to kind of gather as I go. So I'm gonna keep going on this and then we'll see a little more progress. All right, so I have finished doing all those stitches all the way around the waistband and I've pulled them in tight. So I don't need them to be pulled in quite this tight. I can actually loosen them a little bit, but for now this is fine. 
You can see what's happening on the end here. Remember I went in from starting at the outside when I started out, so it would fold this way. Here, basically, it's the opposite. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of cheat it. So just make like a really little tiny pleat there at the edge. And it's not gonna really matter because it's gonna be in the back anyway. So I'm just gonna go like that so that my thread will be on the other side when I finish it off. So then you can see if I pull that tight, that very last pleat there is just really tiny compared to the others and that's totally fine. It's not a big deal. So the benefit of cartridge pleating is that it allows you to get a lot of volume into a very small waistband. In fact, the general rule of this is that you need to gather at least six times your waist into this. So taking up six times is no problem. So from here, we are ready to start attaching to the waistband. And as a note, I went ahead and left the hem at the bottom undone. So I am gonna do that at the end to show you guys the best way, because it is best you check the length at the end. We are not going to tie these off. We are going to leave them. We're gonna take our waistband and we want that to be marked with three equal spaces. That way we can find where we have the three sections of fabric and we can match that up so that we get an even gather into the waistband. So this side that's free, kind of the loose end, I wanna attach that last. I wanna start over here so I can kind of just pull the tension of the pleats however I need it. So I'm gonna select what side of the waistband I want to apply this to. And basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the top of the skirt and we're going to attach it to the waistband. We're going to attach this such that the pleats are on the inside of the waistband. So from the right side of the skirt, it's gonna look like this, right? The pleats are gonna be attached onto the waistband and that extra bulk is gonna be in the back. Now we're gonna attach these by hand. That means we'll need a third needle with thread on it. So you can kind of get an idea of how wide you want your pleats to actually be if you find that seam. So you can see I can definitely let these out quite a bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So because I can let them out quite a bit, that means I could have made the pleats even smaller if I had wanted to. But it's okay. They don't have any specific specified width that they have to be. Okay, so that looks we're pretty close. So basically I wanna make sure that these are evenly spaced. So they're just not quite as tight as I had originally made them. So I'm gonna take a needle and some thread and once again, I like to get a double thickness on this thread. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna start sewing that outside edge of that pleat onto the waistband. And we are going to sew each and every pleat. So this pleat goes onto the waistband, right there about at the edge. And then we're gonna sew the next pleat. So we're just gonna catch the edge of that next pleat and we're gonna catch the waistband as well. We're gonna keep doing that. So we're gonna catch the next pleat edge and sew it onto the waistband. My thread doesn't wanna behave today. It just got cold and we turned on the heater and the air is just like more dry or something. Seems to be affecting my thread in addition to me. <laughs> We're just gonna keep going, catching each pleat and then stitching it onto the waistband. All right, so now I have sewn all of those pleats onto the waistband. So every single pleat is tacked down with a stitch onto that waistband 
all the way around. So there's the inside and then the outside. Now what we're gonna do is finally finish off these gathering stitches. But it's very important that we do that after we sew it onto the waistband because that way, remember, I was able to kind of let the pleats out or tighten them however I needed while I was sewing it on. What I don't wanna do is get stuck with a certain size before I've actually sewn it onto the waistband and then find that it was too long or too narrow. So now that we're done sewing everything onto the waistband, now we're gonna tie off our thread. And we are gonna leave these threads in there as well. So they're gonna hold that shape as we wear it. So now we mostly have a skirt. We need to hem the bottom edge. So we have this overlap piece there. And what I wanna do now is put my closure of choice on there. So I personally like hooks and eyes. So I'm gonna put a hook and eye here and then another one on the back there so that it's secured from both sides. And then once I have that installed, I'm gonna put the skirt on and check the length and then I'm gonna do the hem. All right, so great news. I attach the hooks and eyes to my waistband. So here is the skirt. It is all cartridge pleated and I attached a hook and eye here and then another one here. So it kind of overlaps like that. Now, if this is an outer skirt, you actually can attach more hooks and eyes in here so that this stays shut. You can also put a placket behind it. And in fact, I did cartridge pleat my Civil War dress, my 1860s work dress that is on my YouTube channel. So you can see that too. And since that was an outer skirt, I did put extra hooks and eyes here to close it. This one is a petticoat or an underskirt. So I don't really care about that because it doesn't really matter. So got the skirt and then it is not hemmed yet. What I do is I try it on to make sure the length is good and then get ready to hem it. This is nice and tight on my natural waistline. Okay, so here we have the skirt. That length is very good and I did actually go ahead and iron it for the hem already and it's gonna be pretty perfect. To hem the skirt, I simply am folding this over twice at the bottom edge here. So I fold it over half an inch first, and then the rest of it, I fold it up enough to make it the right length. So whatever you had there that you need to fold over, just go ahead and do that. And so I ironed it down once with that half inch, and then I ironed it again with the rest of it. Now you can pin this obviously if you need to. This taffeta is really holding just fine without pins, so I'm gonna go ahead and sew it. All right, and the hem is on. And I've got my pocket slits here in the seams, if I can find one. So when I wear pockets around my waist, I can access them that way. And I will put this on with pockets in the other room where I can be a little more modely so you can see what it all looks like. These are the pockets that I like to wear underneath my dresses. They're based on 18th century styles, but actually this shape is seen as early as the 16th century. So it goes actually perfectly with this style of petticoat skirt, which is from the same time period. Both these pockets and these petticoats changed relatively little throughout this time period. Obviously you can find some regional and specific variations, but both these pockets and this petticoat are very nice wardrobe staples both for making historical clothing and for making modern and fantasy clothing. What kind of skirt are you gonna make with your new knowledge of cartridge pleating and skirt making? Are you gonna make a petticoat, an outer skirt, a historical project, a modern one, a fantasy one? Let me know in the comments what you're gonna do with this. I'm pretty excited to wear this with my new fantasy Renaissance pre-Raphaelite 
St. Lucia gown that I'm making. And I'm also excited to have this as a piece to wear with other gowns in the future because these petticoats are actually super useful. Please subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss anything I post here. You can also find me on the social medias as Daisy Victoria. My website is daisyvictoria.com. And if you are so inclined, I would love to have your support on Patreon, where I provide advanced access and other tips, tricks, and goodies for you. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have a magical day and I'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.